Usually you come to his channel and expect an earphone review from me, yeah? But I do have another thing that I really like to do as well, which is photography, which I guess kind of makes sense given that, you know, this whole YouTube thing, right? You need the audio side of things and the video side of things. So many times have I indulged in shutter therapy sessions to cope with all the things that life throws at me. So with that said, what are we looking at today? Well, recently, Digicam, so digital cameras, right? Old cameras from 2011 to before that have been all the rage. And although I wasn't really interested in them at first, eventually I have gotten into this rabbit hole. And I feel like this is a good place to show all of that. So here's how my journey with Digicams have began with these crap old little Canon cameras that I thrifted. And here's the kind of pictures that you can get out of these. When I went for my first Digicam, I wanted something small and light because I wasn't really willing to carry an extra thing that took worse pictures than my phone, especially if it was too bulky. So I just wanted something small I could slip into my pocket, something that didn't feel like a hassle to take with me. But I still wanted the Digicam to have a bit more mileage with its pictures that I can edit later on. Usually this would come in the form of raw files that most digicams just really do not support. But because I was entering this trend quite late, by this point digicams have become incredibly scalped in prices. Let me tell you, you will not understand how some of the, the postings I see with like hundreds, two hundred dollar digicam deals. What what is that? But uh anyways. The nice looking models basically were all gobbled up, right? Luckily, I did manage to find this little guy. Look at this. As you can see in the writing, it's called the Canon Ixus 105, which uh, it's also known by a, a few other names because Canon has regional names and all that. Now, this thing, I think, was sold for like 30 bucks in the used electronic market that I found in Vietnam, but I managed to haggle it down to 20 bucks, uh, spent another five on a charger for this. And I guess it's not the cheapest kind of deal considering the condition, as you can see here, but it, it's still decent, I guess. Now, of course, as you can see, this thing, it looks beat the hell up because it is oh even the the gasket the silicone gasket on the uh data transfer port it's gone a long time ago and it's also quite dusty i had to clean this thing like a lot and it's still kind of dusty initially when i bought it uh the screen it had this nasty darkened corners but it kind of fixed itself a little bit, so it's it's not as bad as it is now after a few charges. So if you b are buying some of these used Digicams, the darkened screen corners, this is gonna be a kind of common fault that you'll see. It doesn't affect the pictures or operation, kind of, but expect this kind of behavior from the screens. After a few charges though, again, like I said, the screen fixed itself a bit, it's still darkened, but usable, I guess. The battery that I have in here, it's a third party China thingy, not the original, but hey, as long, at least I don't think it's original, but hey, it's using an NB6L and as long as it works, sure, whatever goes in here is fine. The thing is though, uh, it doesn't show right now, but usually if you remove the battery for a long while, you're gonna have to reset the time and date on this camera. That's just gonna be a thing with these old Digicams and most of the time it, it, it again, it doesn't affect the picture, but it's a little bit of extra annoyance that you'll just have to deal with. 
But hey, as long as it works, right? And pretty much, you know, with this kind of camera, what you see is what you get. You just turn it on and you start shooting. That's it. It takes about a second to turn on and half a sec to save your images, which I guess is fairly quick for what it is. And it allows you to just click away in the street, which is a great thing. Inside of this Canon XS105 is a standard 1 over 2.3 inch CCD sensor that pumps out the magical and retro colors that everyone's been raving about. Except the unedited pictures, it, it actually looks pretty meh. Uh, kind of bland with sort of washed out colors and a bit of a yellow cast because I think that's just how Canon color science works, probably. Uh, Canon's menus are pretty simple to use. Like, you know, as you can see here, I just put it on P mode instead of the uh, intelligent auto mode. And uh, basically I just control the ISO. If it's like in daylight, I leave it at um, something like 200 or 400, you know, just to get the shutter speed to go up a little bit to freeze action a little bit better. And I leave the focus mode at center because the uh, multi-focus tracking thing, it's just quite flaky and it tends to not aim on the subject that I want it to. But otherwise, that's pretty much all I do and I just shoot away. Oh yeah, it also has a little bit of a zoom in kind of thing so you can check focus, but it's not the greatest screen ever. So uh, focus is like 50-50 on this thing, but hey, as long as it works, right? So with the camera JPEGs, pretty much everything above ISO 400 is gonna be pretty smeary and blotchy because of the noise reduction applied. This is also just a, quite a common thing with all of these old digi cams actually. However, here is where things get interesting. With CHDK custom firmwares, yes, you can load custom firmwares on these old Canons, you can get raw capture. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's not exactly like the raw files you're gonna get it from a phone or like an actual camera that supports it. Uh, you have to do like this sort of convoluted conversion into DNG because it originally comes out a bit kind of weird, like two files for the picture. But it does get you raw capture. Oh, and uh, the, the saving times are gonna increase as well. But hey, you get raw files to play with, so I'm just happy with that. Not that the, the files here are somehow going to make your pictures magically better, but they do bypass the aggressive noise reduction, which makes pictures overly smooth. Uh, I, I kind of like to keep the grainy texture because, you know, retro feel and all that. And it gives you a little bit more, and I mean a little bit more, dynamic range to play with in post. For a starter to the Digicam world, I, I, I don't think I did that bad with uh, this score, right? For better or for worse, the XS105 here introduced me to this digicam rabbit hole and it basically kicked my gas acquisition syndrome into high gear uh, that's my best attempt at a smooth transition to my next purchase all right now i know that with chdk and i guess sdm which is what i use it's a simplified version of chdk that's a little bit easier to install and use I know I can get more mileage out of a lot of these Canon Digicams, whereas otherwise I'd have to be content with the JPEG output from other brands. So naturally I sought out another Canon. This time I wanted something with a bit more control, considering that the Ixus was basically just auto shooter all the time. And lo and behold, there was a posting for a PowerShot SX210. Oh, what a convoluted name. But yes, it was on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I grabbed it for like 30 bucks. There was a really bad mold and dust infestation in the lens and sensor. So I had to spend another 10 bucks to for someone to open it up and clean it. And to be honest, this PowerShot SX210 
210, it's kind of a dud. So first thing I don't like about this is the ergonomics. So, I mean, the X's, the X's wasn't great to grip on your hands, but it was small, it was light. The SX210 here, it is a hefty thing. And this kind of bulge in the lens, you know, it, I don't know, it just feels uncomfortable to hold it. And it feels like this whole part of the camera is just dragging my hand down. It's just dragging my fingers down and there's no grip here in the surface to help me with that. Second thing is this stupid, stupid flash. It pops open automatically every time you turn it up, even if you don't use it. And if you want to not have it, you have to close it down. And that also means that every time you turn it up, there's a chance that you will accidentally block your hand over the flash. So this is just stupid design. Oh, and uh, the flash on mine, it's also broken. So can't use this anyway. So it's just a useless flippy floppy thing. Lovely. And a shooting speed on this thing is also not great. I think it uses the same Digic 4 sensor uh, uh, chip as this Ixus 105. However, it's just somehow slower to boot up and save pictures. Like anytime I want to take a picture, it's going to take a little bit longer just to save that picture. Despite being, again, same chip as the Ixus. But I'm guessing it's because this thing has 14 megapixels and this has two. Uh, this one has 12, so maybe it takes a longer time to process that. Who knows? The manual controls here, yes, look at this. You have, you know, your aperture priority, shutter priority, and you even have a manual mode. However, the lack of dials and more buttons like on a real camera means that it's it's just frustrating to operate these manual controls. And, and I find myself missing more shots when using this thing on the manual and the AV, uh, TV modes than I do if I would just leave it on auto and have it do its thing anyways. I mean, at least it has the settings now. Maybe it's wrong, but at least it gets me the picture. <sighs> it's it, it, just a lot of cons on here, but there is one redeeming thing about this camera and it's that it's got a 14 times optical zoom 14 times okay you probably can't see anything and it's it's got cctk on here so you can see like these weird custom kind of text on here but yes and it's done doing this thanks to the very uh flattering lens boner as you can see you know it does allow for some interesting shots of subjects that you normally just cannot reach otherwise. Again, 14 times zoom. Although usually the 14 times part is overkill and I tend to hover around five to seven times zoom when I want to get like a far away subject or I just want to keep some distance to not affect the scene basically. But hey, it's there if you ever need it in all of its shaky glory because even with the image stabilization it's it's gonna be hard to keep a focus and uh, uh, to keep a subject in the frame when you're doing 14 times zoom and that's kind of it for the pros of this thing like yeah this is a no buy in my eyes it, it saves slowly stupid flash design ergonomics are not great you know what the kicker is i have seen this thing being sold for two hundred dollars this is how you know this this digicam market is just wild it's broken so no i i'm out of here i wouldn't buy this thing for the 30 bucks i paid and i wouldn't buy for two hundred dollars for sure nope okay okay so i've got a hit and i've got a dud honestly shooting with digicams i have been refreshing Honestly, before this, I've always thought that they were a bit of a waste given that your phone basically matches their capabilities or possibly even better. And again, with DNG raw files and all that stuff, you can just edit your pictures to look retro. <sighs> These old digicams 
do create pictures that have a distinct vibe to them. Not necessarily because the, there's some magic about CCD sensors, but I would chalk it down to the less accurate, less thorough color processing and post-processing that's done to pictures on these old cameras. And because they have like these very low quality lens with like, you know, the, the coatings are kind of chipping off, they produce distinct light flares and a more hazy, glowy lighting that is just lovely and dreamy in daylight conditions. Something that, you know, you have to do further with editing on an actually good camera, I guess. So, well, I got these, I put CHDK on them, I still have the raw files, and I still edit the pictures to make them more clean and to make them lean closer to a stylized view that I want. But the digicams, because of these, all of these quote unquote optical errors, they make me get to the desired picture faster. An example would be this picture of the sunset sandwiched between two buildings. Here's the pic on the Canon Ixus, and here it is taken by a Sony a7C, you know, a really good DSLR. Full frame, sure. I can edit the picture of the a7C until it looks like the Canons, or at least look close to the Canons, but the Canon pretty much nailed the feel that I want from the picture shot out of camera, in part because of its pitiful low dynamic range. This is a far cry from the overly strong HDR effects that you get on modern smartphones nowadays. It's something that smartphones can't really replicate because they do so much post-processing on the pictures. And the other thing is the zoom, right? Most of these digicams, they, they tend to sport a three or four times optical zoom. On the Ixus, it's four times. And on, of course, this power shot thing, it has 14 times optical zoom. Like, of course, there are also others that reach even further zoom levels in digicams. And of course, because it's optical, you have zoom levels in between, not just set zoom levels like in a ca phone camera where it's like 1x, 3x, 5x, 10x, right? But even these further zooms on phone cameras, they're limited to the newest flagships. It's not something that all phones have, especially in the mid-range. So technically, at max zoom levels, these digicams are still comparable, if not better, than what your phone can do. Hmm. Finally, you know, it's just the feeling of holding a dedicated camera in your hands, right? appreciating its form and its function. It, it does have a certain geeky charm to it. And if you know, you've seen me from my audio reviews, I love these little knickknacks and technology. So I love this too. And when you hold this, you feel, you know, even in a street, right? You feel like you're a tourist taking pictures and it does make you a lot less intimidating to the subjects that you're shooting compared to if you were lugging a DSLR or, or something like much heftier. So it allows you to get pictures uh, in a more discreet way that otherwise you would just not get. All that being said, I, I am definitely on a high with these digicams and I'm certainly hankering for more. So stay tuned for more videos about these. You know what? I, I can't say when it will come, but we'll get to it when we get to it. All right. This is Marion. See you next time.